Can you spot the microcontroller on this board? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if you can't. Let me zoom in and show you. This tiny microcontroller is what we believe to be the smallest ARM microcontroller and measures in at a tiny 1.565 by 1.411 millimeters. And that is almost the same size as some of the passive components on this board. For a bit of context, the Raspberry Pi RP2040 is 7x7mm, so practically giant in comparison. Hello and welcome to a Learn Embedded Systems video, where today we are taking a look at the HC32L110B8, bit of a mouthful that, <laughs> that microcontroller, from HDSC, as well as the accompanying dev board from Lilygo. We recently covered this board on our Embedded Systems news site. There is a link to that to follow us um, on Google News in the description if you want to stay up to date with Embedded Systems news. In this video, we're going to go over the specs of this tiny chip, then take a look at the board, and then give a little demo about how to program with this microcontroller. But before we continue, I would like to thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a PCB manufacturer who can produce and assemble almost any PCB that you can think of, including standard multi-layer PCBs, flexible PCBs, and more. Their fast turnaround time means they are a great choice for prototyping your projects. They offer surface mount and through-hole assembly services. PCBWay also offer CNC services, including 3D printing, CNC machining, and injection molding. So they really have every service that you need for your next project. New members get a £5 voucher when you sign up, which can cover the cost of 10 two-layer PCBs. Check out PCBWay by using the link in the video description. Let's start with the pricing of this board. This dev board is listed on AliExpress for about £7.40, which is just under $10. There is also a kit which includes a USB to TTL converter, a USB-C to C1, for a total of £12.70, about $15. US dollars. The board is sometimes available for a bit less on Banggood, but at the time of filming it was out of stock. I will leave purchase links uh, down in the description. The chip itself is quite good value, it can be found on Chinese on the Chinese distributor LCSC, uh, only on their Chinese site for some reason, um, for about 60 pence a unit. Of course the shipping and handling fees will increase that cost quite uh, considerably. If we take a look at the dev board, it comes in as a not particularly compact 30 by 22 millimeters, and this isn't really making the use of the tiny microcontroller, but it is a good enough uh, form factor to test the chip out and see if you would want to use it in any of your projects. If we take a look at the specs of the HC32 chip, squeezed into this package is a single ARM Cortex M0 Plus core that runs at up to 32 megahertz. Supporting this core, there is 32 kilobytes of flash memory and 4 kilobytes of RAM. In terms of GPIO, there are 12 GPIO ports available. Another slightly larger 20-pin package version does support more, uh, up to 16 GPIO ports. And some of these GPIO ports are multiplexed with analog inputs. For peripheral interfaces, there is one SPI interface, one I2C interface, and two UART controllers. It also supports low-power UART or LPUART. There is a 12-bit ADC, or analog to digital converter, that can sample at up to 1 mega samples per second, which is remarkably impressive. There are 9 external ADC channels, although one of them appears to be taken up with an, an internal voltage sensor which can measure the temperature on the chip. Just to reiterate how small this chip is, it measures in at just 1.565 by 1.411 millimeters and comes in a CSP16 package, which is a BGA a chip with a 0.35 millimeter pitch. The distances between the solder balls in this BGA are quite tight, and you should check them with your PCB manufacturer to see if they can support these sorts of tolerances. In terms of documentation, there isn't an English datasheet yet, and I've run the Chinese version through Google Translate, and I'll link that down below in the description. Some of the translation is a little rough. Now taking a look at the development board, we can see how simple and bare bones it is. There is a USB-C connector, which is nice, two buttons, 
One of them is a reset button, and the other is a user button. And finally, a WS2812 RGB LED. And that's about it. In terms of the pinout, I will leave it on the screen now if you want to look at it. Um, a full description of pin functions can be found on the datasheet. Now I'm going to briefly cover how to program this board and set up the required toolchain. You can use Keel IDE, um, and that is what LilyGo appears to have recommended with this board. You can use a JLink debugger, uh, or you can also use a USB to TTL converter. This USB C to C one that I got from LilyGo appears to be quite neat. The converter was included in that kit I previously mentioned. If you haven't used Keel IDE before, it's quite easy to set up, and I'll walk through it quickly now. Firstly, you're going to want to download and install Keel MKD5, which is linked below. You do have to fill out a form, but as far as I'm aware, you can just put in random information. Using the evaluation version is fine for this board. Whilst uh, this program is installing, you can clone the LilyGo THC32 GitHub repo to somewhere sensible. I put it in the Keel installation folder. And once Keel is installed, we need to copy the download algorithms that came in the GitHub repo into the Keel installation directory in the arm slash flash directory. There are instructions on how to do this on the GitHub repo page. There are also a couple of missing documents that we need to download. Firstly, an older C compiler. To be specific, arm compiler 5. You can download and install it from the link below. During the installation, change the install location to your keel installation and put it in the ARM directory. So for example, uh, the, the path where I saved it is, say, is uh, up on the screen now. With that all sorted, open keel microvision. Don't worry about the board or package downloader that might pop up for now. We can open the example keel project in the examples factory, then MDK directory. You may have to change the visible files to see the uh, UV project file. We then need to register the new compiler by going to manage project items, then pressing the folders slash extensions tab, and then clicking the three dots next to use ARM compiler. Select add another ARM compiler and navigate to where you saved the ARM compiler five. Hit okay. Mine gave me an error because I've just added it uh, before filming this video. And then we need to force the project to use this compiler. Open the options for target button and then navigate to the target tab. Select uh, version 5.0 whatever version you downloaded from the compiler list and then press OK to close. In the project explorer there may be some unnecessary files um, and these were marked with a, uh, an orange exclamation mark. You can safely remove the u 8 by 8 and readme groups by right clicking the folder icon and pressing remove group. We can then open the main.c file in the source folder and edit it how we like. I'm just going to build this example file by hitting the build button and this will generate a hex file that we can program to the board. Unfortunately also missing from the LilyGo GitHub repos repository uh, is the microcontroller programmer. I found this um, program in a different uh, GitHub repo and I've linked that down below. You can download it to the H HDSC ISP directory um, from the GitHub repo, from the LilyGo repo where it should have been. Open it and ensure the board that you want to program is plugged in with the USB to TTL adapter. Configure the programmer as shown on screen and select your hex file in this section. The COM port will auto select if there is only one de uh, COM device connected and then you have to hit execute on the screen, execute is this box highlighted now, and hit reset on the board at the same time. Now this takes a, a, a couple of goes to, to get right, uh, but eventually you'll, get, you'll see it start running through programming and then you'll get to 100% completion and your board should now be programmed. Now that we've programmed this board, it is time for some thoughts. I think this is a really cool chip although its applications are probably limited. It's impressive that they have managed to fit a fully fledged microcontroller into such a small package. The analog to digital converter is surprisingly well specced and it has enough features for most basic projects. It would be really interesting to hear what you think this chip could be used for. 
it would have to be very space constrained applications because it is tiny. It would really suck to drop one of these onto your workbench or something as you're uh, assembling your PCBs as you'll probably never find it again. So overall that sums up this video. Let us know down in the comments what you think of this chip, whether it is something you would want to use in your projects. Also be sure to have a think about some applications where this chip would be useful and let us know down in the comments. If you have enjoyed this video and want to stay up to date with Embedded Systems news and tutorials then be sure to subscribe and leave a like on the video. Thank you very much for watching and as always have a nice day. Nice